In class, we analyzed this circuit and uh, determining the dampening of it and the response to a switching from being in this position where the capacitor is being charged in this part of the circuit and then at T equals zero, switching on over to that position there. What I'd like to do in this video, though, is go through the process of determining the initial conditions for all of the well, the initial and final conditions for all of the voltages and currents in this circuit for T greater than zero. So to that end, because this is a parallel combination after it's after it's uh, the switching, they'll all be in, in parallel with each other. So the voltage is going to be the same across all the devices. We'll call that V. So we're going to be interested in V of zero minus, V of zero plus, and V at infinity. Then let's also go ahead and define the current through the capacitor, the current through the inductor, I sub L, and the current through the resistor, I sub R, all referenced down from the upper node here. And we're going to be interested in I sub C at zero minus, I sub C at zero plus, and I sub C at infinity. We're also going to be interested in I sub L at zero minus, I sub L at zero plus, I sub L at infinity, and finally I sub R at zero minus, I sub R at zero plus, and I sub R at infinity. So let's just go ahead and uh, jump into this. As you can see, we've got an energy source here, a power supply on the left-hand side, that will be charging the capacitor prior to the switching. Let's redraw that circuit. We've got the 50 volt source here. We've got a 10 kilo ohm resistor, a 15 kilo ohm resistor, and then the capacitor in parallel with that 15 kilo ohm resistor. And the way the story goes is the switch has been in this position for a long time so that any changing currents or voltages have stopped changing. The capacitor is fully charged to its final value. And hopefully in this situation, you can see that because it's fully charged, whoop, because it's fully charged, there will be no current going into the capacitor. And all the current will be going from the source, the 50 volt source, so the 10 kilo ohm and the 15 kilo ohm resistor, those two resistors are going to be in series because there's no current going that way. So from this, we can see that I sub C of zero minus is going to be zero. And we can also see that the voltage across the capacitor is simply going to be the voltage across this 15 kilo ohm resistor, or V sub C at zero minus is going to be, from a voltage divider, 50 times 15 over 10 plus 15, those are all in kilo ohms, so the units are going to cancel. And we get 50 times 15 20 fifths, or 3 fifths of 50, and that is 30 volts. Now, on the other side, we've got the 50 amp current source. And this is still, let's be explicit here, this is for T uh, less than zero for both of these. So we've got the resistor there and we've got the coil here. 50 milliamps. And again the story is is that the switch has been in this position long enough so that all we have is the inductor and the resistor in parallel with the current source. It's been in that position long enough so that the currents and voltages have stabilized to whatever they're going to be. And under those circumstances because the current is a constant the voltage across here at that instant is going to be zero because the voltage across the inductor is equal to L times dI dt. If the current isn't changing, the derivative will be zero, and the voltage across here is will be zero. And because the voltage is zero, there will be no current going through the resistor. Effectively, this inductor is acting as a short circuit and all 50 milliamps of the source are shorting through the inductor. So that gives us then I sub L at zero minus is equal to 50 milliamps. 
Now, let's go ahead and draw the circuit for T greater than zero. We'll have then the capacitor, the inductor, the resistor, and the current source. And now we need to talk about what do we have for, oh, uh, well, let's see. We know that there's no current going through the resistor, so I sub R at zero minus is going to be zero. And that gives us all the zero minus quantities. Alrighty, so now the switch moves to the right, and this is the circuit that we've got. Now we know that you can't instantaneously change the voltage on the capacitor. So the voltage on the capacitor, which was 30 volts, is now the voltage across the entire parallel combination, and that can't change instantaneously, so V immediately after, or V at zero plus, is going to be 30 volts also. And when we talk about the inductor, you can't instantaneously change the current to the inductor, so the inductor's current is going to be 50 milliamps right after the switching also. Now, what else can we find? Well, we know that there's 30 volts across the combination, the parallel combination, which means that there's 30 volts across the inductor and also 30 volts across the resistor. So we can get the current through the resistor at T equals zero plus. It's simply going to be the 30 volts divided by the resistance of 650 ohms, or 30 divided by 650. And that turns out to be um, 48, 48 milliamps. Now, what else can we find here? Um, we still need to get the uh, initial current in the capacitor. We've got the initial values of everything else. So how can we get the initial current in the capacitor? We know I sub L. We know I sub R. We know the 50 milliamps. So to get the initial current in the capacitor, or the current at zero plus, we can write a KCL for this top node here and writing that as uh, summing all the currents leaving the source, or leaving the node, we have, um, let me do it over here where I get a little bit more room. We have I sub C at zero plus, plus I sub L at zero plus, plus I sub R at zero plus, must all add to equal the 50 milliamps. So I sub C at zero plus is going to equal the 50 milliamps, minus I sub L at zero plus, minus I sub R at zero plus. That gives us the 50, minus I sub L at zero plus, that was 50 milliamps, minus I sub R at zero plus, that was 48 milliamps. That gives us then I sub C at zero plus is equal to a negative 48 milliamps. How are we supposed to understand that? Why is it negative 48? Well, we've defined the current in the capacitor as the current leaving going this way. A negative 48 milliamps means that, in fact, the current is entering the node. So we've got positive 48 milliamps coming into the node. We've got 50 milliamps going into the node. We've got 50 milliamps leaving the node through the inductor. And we've got the 48 milliamps leaving the node through the resistor. All righty, all we've got left then are to determine, or what we have left to do is determine the values as t approaches infinity. Now after a long period of time, i.e. t equals infinity, once again, the currents will have stabilized. Currents and voltages will have become constant. And once again, that means that the current through this inductor is going to be constant. The current constant means that the voltage across here, again, which is equal to V is equal to L D I D T, if the current is constant, the voltage across there is going to be zero. Over here in the circuit where we're talking about, this inductor then, with the voltage across there being zero, it's a short circuit. And there will be no voltage across it. In fact, this coil acts at that point as simply a wire shorting the circuit out. 
So the voltage across the parallel combination as t goes to infinity is going to be zero volts. If there's no volts across this resistor, there will be no current through that resistor, and I sub r at infinity will also be zero. And because the voltage is constant, not necessarily that it's zero, but because the voltage is constant, we know in a capacitor, I of a capacitor is equal to C dV dt. The voltage isn't changing, therefore the current is going to be zero. So at infinity, I sub C will be zero. And now we're left with I sub L. If there's no current here, through the capacitor, there's no current through the resistor, then once again that inductor will be shorting everything out and the entire 50 milliamps will end up going through the inductor.